I want to do a disclaimer upfront to this video that if you are a college student, if you are somebody who's trying to learn how to code, or if you are somebody who's wanting to get into corporate, but you are not in it just yet, you may want to sit this video out. Please don't watch it. I know it sounds mean, but I have to understand my responsibilities as a content creator who mainly caters towards college students and the opinions and the viewpoints that are going to be shared in this video will be targeted towards people who already have a job in corporate. Because the idea of work-life balance doesn't really cater to college students, it's not really applicable there. It's mostly towards people who have a job. So the viewpoints that I will discuss in this video will skew your viewpoint towards the world if you are a college student. So please consider not watching. All right, fine. Now the college students are gone. Let's get into the video. So the idea of work-life balance is something that is controversial these days and I do not understand why that is. The discussions around work-life balance is something that caught fire a lot recently and there have been multiple videos of tech CEOs or just influencers giving their take on work-life balance and saying and expressing their opinions on whether people deserve the work-life balance or not. And the short answer to that is, according to my opinion, yes, they do deserve it. L let me explain why. So later in this video, I will play some clips and then I will provide additional context. But let's first discuss the fundamental problem that is. I think the fundamental problem for people saying that or tech CEOs saying that people don't deserve work-life balance is they are not able to relate to people's problems anymore. There is a difference between the word employee and employer and which is where the translation is lost in the conversation. When an employer goes to a podcast or a YouTube video and says that I don't believe in work-life balance and you should not either, it should make sense, right? Like obviously the boss will always want his workers to put in more hours, to put in more productivity so it results in more money. But is that money for the employees? Do they get a cut of the profit that they generated because of the extra hours they put in? So talking from an employee perspective, the contract already has the number of hours and the compensation in the offer letter itself, which is why the employees show up to a job every day. And then they get told that they have to put in extra hours. It makes sense that they would want some compensation for it. You may know that in some sales jobs, there are some things called incentives. So salespeople have a base salary and the more sales that they make on the day, they get a cut out of it. They get a 25% commission or whatever. So salespeople and some similar positions like that, that do offer incentives, they don't need to tell people that they have to work extra hard. They will do it themselves. They are happy to make company a lot of money because they know that they are getting paid for it. They deserve a compensation and they do get the compensation, a percentage of that. But when it comes to tech companies, the job positions being software developer, front end and back end, QA tester, automation tester, uh, project manager, customer support, these roles don't have incentives to them. You can work as hard as you want or not work as hard as you want and you're still getting paid the same amount of money. You can argue with hourly pay or monthly pay but the fact remains that there are no incentives for you to work harder than you usually would. Hourly pay solves this problem a little bit because Obviously, you're getting paid by the hour, so the more number of hours you put in the company, you're getting compensated for it. So it solves the problem just a little bit. But for the Indian workers, where monthly salary is the norm to go, there isn't really any incentive for employees, is there? There is no incentive for you to work harder than you usually would, because it's not going to make a change. You are getting paid the exact same money anyway. So why would anybody do that in the first place? And the economy is something that I want to discuss. Corporate and the general media has told us that we have to be comfortable with not owning things. The quote that you will own nothing and you will be happy is something that is well known these days. Everything is a subscription. Games are not physical anymore. Everything is a digital purchase and not even lets you own the games. It's basically a license for you to play the game, which can be taken away at any time the company wants or the server gets shut down. The online shopping companies that do offer products no longer tell you the full price upfront. Instead, they show you the divided price upfront in the form of EMIs. I'll put a screenshot to provide additional context. So one example is Flipkart on this. So all of these things point towards an economy that has told us that we are getting the bare minimum out of everything. So where is the motivation for employees to work harder towards anything if it's not resulting in their benefit? 
in the short term or in the long term at least. So the only thing that employees ask for in return is the ability to go home at a set amount of time and spend time with their family. And now corporate is telling us that we don't need that either because they are working 20 hours a day. So you should be working 20 hours a day at no extra incentive. Now, this is a point where I watched a video of Shwetab Gangwar where I agreed with him so much, where he talked about this DNA thing where humans are encoded with their DNA that we feel strong and we feel united when we are with people of our tribe. Tribe meaning family or friends. This sense of unity is not achieved in the workplace and certainly not achieved when you are working and you are living in another city outside of your home. So the one thing that does recharge employees' batteries in a way is when they are with their families spending time with them, doing whatever they want. Because the sense of oneness and this trait of humans is something that is encoded within us since 200,000 years, ever since uh, humans walked on this planet. And the industrial revolution happened only like what, 200 years ago? Let's say 200 years ago. And already capitalism has gotten to a point where it's trying to fight that mentality. It's trying to tell us that we don't need to be with our families. We can just sleep in the office. We should just put extra hours because our country is failing. Putting the blame entirely on the employees itself, telling us that we are the ones who are responsible for our country's decline because we are not the ones putting effort, but it's actually the government and the decisions that uh, executives and the people in power make. So anyway, we have gotten to a stage where capitalism is trying to fight the human DNA itself, telling us that we don't need to be with our families. We can just sleep at the office. We should just live alone um, in a PG close to the office and we should just work extra hours because our country is failing. Are we really going to put the blame on employees not wanting to put extra hours resulting in the country's economy going into the tank? Really? The problem of toxic work environments is something that was discussed some time ago. So many videos on this were made, but that conversation flew away in the dust because obviously our media is owned by the big corporations and everything. Employees telling companies that their work-life environments are toxic is not something that will spread around because it doesn't align with the company's objective, which is to make more money. I don't blame capitalism for it. I know how the game is. It's maximize profit and minimize cost. So this sentiment is going a little bit too extreme at this point. So now let's watch some clips and react to it. And we will start from a little bit brainwashed all the way up to batshit insane. So here's the first clip that I want to play to you. There isn't too much room for work-life balance. You know, when things are a flow and it's cool, you can kind of toe the line between meeting people, feeling okay. But after a point, if you're really trying to zone in on something, you have to put work as a priority or your life social life. Yeah. They cannot coexist, especially if you are working towards a specific goal. 100%. I've been struggling with this for the past like few months. Yeah. And what has helped me is telling the life part of whoever's involved that, yo, I need this year to focus on my work. Yeah. No one is like, oh, I'm so perfectly content with my life. Right? Yeah. You know, like there's always like something like, oh, I want to be working harder. Oh, I want to be dating someone. Or, oh, I want, you know, whatever it is. What I'm saying is that balance comes through selective prioritization at times. Like yeah. you have to give 100% of your work so that eventually it can be on autopilot. So that eventually you can give 100% to your social life. And then it keeps kind of switching until you find a middle ground where you're able to... In the long term, everything's balanced. Yeah. Okay, this is where the disillusionment happens. Where somebody who wants big things to do with their life, who has a set goal in their head that I have to make a million dollars in my business or I need to be a content creator with this many subscribers by next year. They are the ones who tell themselves that they don't need work-life balance and that's perfectly okay. However, the problem arises when this translation happens to employees and they get told that you don't need that balance either. And my question is why? If I am signing a contract with my employer that I will show up to their workplace for eight hours every day and I'll get compensated a fixed amount of money every month, what is wrong with me leaving the workplace on time and go do something that I want to do? This whole idea of I'm a CEO, I put 20 hours a day, so why don't you? The answer is profit. The answer simply is profit. There is nothing in it for me if I put the extra hours in and take your company from somewhere to somewhere. I can get fired with a company-wide email or I can just be logged out of my accounts after I leave the workplace or I may get a company-recorded email or company-recorded video on YouTube that tells me that I no longer have a job. That's what's waiting for me in the long run. 
But these people that say these things, they don't even realize it. That, oh, my goals are way different than the goals of an employee. All the employee wants to do is show up at work, do their work, get paid, and then run their life. That's all that they want. Anyway, let's kick it up a notch. I actually feel like a lot of people are missing out. I feel like a lot of this generation that are buying into the hype um, and that are like sitting there thinking that they're getting ahead doing an ice bath. And it's like, they're going to regret work-life balance. That they're going to get like- They haven't made the money young enough, perhaps. Yeah, because what's going to happen, is they're going to get to a certain age where they have kids and then they're going to go, oh, I've got no money. And also I've lost momentum. Like I'm now this, they're going to sit there and go, actually, I've got peers who are my age, who've got just a lot more experience than me. And personally, I would, if, if it were me, if I was working a really shitty job, I would be doing side hustles. Like yeah. I'd be getting All myself. Change in your job. I'd be getting out of that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you should work really, really hard, really hard to you about 30, 35. So now I baths are a shameful thing to do. I cannot believe that that is the example that is used against us. And then saying that when you get kids and then you're going to be like, I have no money. It's like saying that all of the 40 year olds and all the 50 year olds who are still employees at companies, they have money. Are we really going to sit here and assume that our economy can really support somebody who wants to have a full time job and can afford to have kids? If that is the case, why are so many millennial couples uh, declaring on social media that they're not going to have kids anymore? Why is everybody moving towards adopting dogs or cats instead of having kids. The voice of employees is so loud and clear that we are not getting paid enough. We don't have enough money in the bank that we can deal with emergencies. We don't have enough money to be able to put a down payment on the house. The rent is an all time high. The housing prices is going to an all time high. But no, 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 you having ice baths, that's the issue. Come on, man. Have we really gone this dense? Seriously? Okay, so let's kick it up a notch a bit more. What do you have to say about work-life balance? I, I don't think work-life balance uh, is the right construct. This yes, Saturday, Sunday ka is not an Indian uh, thing. This is a Western thing. In India, we never had Saturdays and Sundays. We had a, the lunar calendar and we had holidays basis that. Right? Okay. Hmm. We had the, uh, one or two days monthly. We never had Saturdays or Sundays. So this is a Western import, firstly. <laughs> then, you know, it became a Western cultural import. And then when the Industrial Revolution happened, Saturdays and Sundays became rest days for manual labor. Hmm. That's why Saturdays and Sundays have relevance in the world today. But in the modern age, they have no relevance in my view. If I look uh, look ahead, you know, look ahead a few decades or one decade or two decades, I don't think uh, work is about five days and then off. So I was editing this clip and I thought about including this one in because this one is an absolute masterpiece at getting an insight into the CEO's mindset. You can see the CEO of Ola speaking in a Western language, wearing Western attire, wearing a Western watch. And now he's saying that Saturdays and Sundays are not an Indian thing. It should actually be studied on how these people go to the point where they lose all sense of awareness. They can't even detect the irony in the things that they are saying. It should be actually studied. Well, anyway, let's kick it up even further. So now we are entering the hazardous zone and I would ask you, that this is a dangerous zone to be in, you may want to hold on to your brain cells before you watch this. Because you may be in a position to lose some of it right now. Now that you have been warned, let's see. Do you think Elon Musk has work-life balance? No. Do you think Steve Jobs, when he was alive, had work-life balance? No. Do you think Bill Gates? No. Henry Ford? No. Original Heineken? No. So if none of those people that created the wealth of the world had work-life balance, why do you think you're going to have it? Why? Because you deserve it? I don't think so. You deserve what you get in life by working hard. I'm sorry, I need a couple seconds for my lost brain cells to regenerate. And I'm actually feeling bad about myself who has to edit this video later then I'm going to be in a position to lose more brain cells in the editing process. So future me, good luck. Anyway, this argument doesn't have an end to it. I think people will have their own perspectives on this. But saying that employees don't deserve work-life balance just because I don't have it is a batshit insane thing to say. These few CEOs ruin the game for all of the rest of the CEOs 
because they are so money driven they are so money greedy and they have to make tons and tons of money off of the backs of the people that they hire that it ruins the game for the good ceos out there i know that there are good ceos i have worked with so many of them that do deserve in letting people do their own thing on time uh, when they show up and when they leave but these some ceos they ruin the game for everybody else they they have to ruin it for everybody else so anyway i think i've lost enough brain cells in this video um yeah i'll see you in the next one can't even do the outro properly <laughs> okay bye